Don Matthews, How to Lose the Job and Influence People. How to Lose the Job and Influence People, Don Matthews. It seems like so many people I talk to have had that memorable experience with the boss. You know, the one where it starts out talking about the company's bottom line and how the company's not doing so well. And then they move on to the downsizing project of the company, only to find out you're part of that downsizing of part of the company, and you're without a job. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Let me tell you what's really going on. Before a company can start a downsizing process, it must cut the costs and they work on cost-saving measures. They put a cap on their spending. They put a cap on their research and development. And they put a cap on anything that costs money. This process is called capsizing. And you'd be better off <laughs> rearranging the furniture on the Titanic than you would be working for that job. <coughs> now, if you think about it, you were either without a job, or sorry, you are either getting laid off, or you are going to leave your company. Either way, you're without a job, and that can be a very frightening experience. But it doesn't have to be. Think of it as the vacation your boss never let you have. <laughs> Is it really that bad to sleep into the crack of noon? Either way, you will have to get back into the job hunting process. You have to go into interviews. But my advice? Relax and enjoy it a little bit. In fact, you should take a job interview for a job that you do not want. <laughs> when you find this job that you do not want, you do it by looking for the companies that do not have high company morale. It's real simple. They have signs on the wall that say things like, the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> and this is part of my three-step process to, to losing that job and influencing people. That was the first step. The second step, of course, is once you get that interview with the company that you do not want to work for, is to help them find those weaknesses. <laughs> you know, just tell them. You, you make them work at it. For example, they ask you how your computer skills go, how your computer skills are. You can say, well, I'm not really slow. I'm not fast. I'm just kind of half fast. <laughs> <laughs> and if they question your attitude, you can look them right in the eye and say, I give 110%. That's 1% on Monday. <laughs> months of unemployment where you could not find a job. I hate that question because my resume looks like Swiss cheese when it comes to that. <laughs> six months. What did you do for that six months? I answer like this. Well, sir, when I got laid off for the previous job, I was driving down, driving home down the freeway, and there was an opportunity on a building. It had green background and gold lettering, and it said, Drink Canada Dry. <laughs> what an opportunity! I turned my car north to Canada to see how well I could do. <laughs> I love Canada. That's some good drinking parties. <laughs> the third step. The third step is to leave them with a feel-good story. This is very important because you don't want them to interfere with any opportunities that you do want. You want them to like you. You just don't want them to hire you. <laughs> my favorite feel-good story is when they ask me, what is it that you do best, better than anybody else? And I tell them this story. When I was in high school, my friends and I went walking through the countryside and we noticed a construction site. 
they were building a huge barn in the field. And in this pile near the barn was a pile of shingles. And in this pile over here was a pile of manure from the pasture. Well, we got this idea to take the shingles from the pile, put it in the manure, and put it on top of the roof. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with this, but the real challenge was that the pitch of the roof was so steep we couldn't make it stick on the roof. I could take that shingle, stick it in the manure, and put it right on top of the roof and make it stick every single time. And not only that, I was accurate with it too. I could flip it, stick it, and spell my name. <laughs> oh, and in the last name, Matthews, spelled with one T properly. <laughs> that do better than anybody else. I love to see the reaction on their faces. In fact, one time it backfired on me. The interviewer looked at me and he said, Don, I don't think we can use you in engineering, but I think we have a place for you in marketing. <laughs> see, the guys in marketing know how to flip the bowl. We need somebody to make it stick. 